Hello there, it's me and Stable Voltage. Welcome to another How to Play Old World video. Uh, in this video, I will be covering two topics. They're both quite short and there is a bit of overlap, so it's worth covering them both together. They are considered basics, but they are fundamental to the way the game plays, and neither are particularly well explained in the tutorial, so I'm going to go through them here reasonably quickly. So that's the order system and the movement system. So first of all, Starting with the order system, this is something that's going to impact the way you play the game from start to finish. Unlike something like Civilization, where you can basically do as many things you want to in a turn, if you've got 100 units, you can move all of those 100 units. If you've got 1,000 units, you can move all of them. You're not going to be able to do that in Old World because you're limited by your orders. So you can see your orders in two places. Down here in the bottom left hand corner next to your character portrait you can see it's represented by a little scroll with a red wax seal on it. Below you can see the number how many we have so I have 16 orders on this turn and uh, just below that a little bit difficult to see there's a little 16 plus 16 in green which is telling me how many orders per turn I am getting. It's also replicated up here on the top bar next to the rest of the resources. Now if you mouse over it up here, and I believe, yep, if you mouse over it down here as well, you can see where those orders are coming from. So it's getting rounded down, I'm actually getting 16.2. Um, I'm getting plus 0 0.6 from my character. I am getting um, 10 from the uh, difficulty level. I'm getting plus 4 from a law that we have enacted, and I'm getting... Uh, plus 1.6 from legitimacy. There are various different ways that you can get additional orders. You can get them from certain improvements on uh, certain improvements on animals. Um, I think on uh, camels. Yeah, if you build a camp on like camels and horses, you get additional orders and things like that. Uh, most of your orders are going to come from legitimacy. So the current legitimacy here is only 16. Uh, legitimacy will go up the higher opinions that other families have of you. Again, I'm going to cover characters in another video because it's quite a complex one. Uh, you can get extra legitimacy from finding natural wonders such as rivers, mountain ranges, lakes and things like that. Uh, you can get legitimacy from completing events and various other ways. So getting your legitimacy up is a good way to get more orders uh, along with building camps on horses and camels. And the number of orders is going to limit what you can do in a turn. So everything that you can do, or almost everything that you can do, is going to cost orders. Moving a unit costs an order. Uh, getting a unit to perform an action, such as getting a scout to harvest a resource, will cost an order. Getting a worker to build an improvement will cost an order. Getting a military unit to, to attack something else will cost an order. Uh, defending when attacked doesn't cost an order because that's not done on the player's turn. Um, upgrading a military unit, healing a military unit, promoting a military unit and adding a general to a military unit, they will all cost an order. Um, there are also various interactions with families that you can do, again, that I'll cover in another video, but when you're performing a diplomatic action, such as uh, trying to influence uh, another character or trying to um, perform some sort of uh, spy action on another character, all of those things will cost an order. When you're out of orders on a turn, you can't do anything further. Uh, there are a few things that don't cost orders. Uh, you can pick a science that doesn't uh, cost an order choosing your tech. If you go into a uh, build it uh, into a city and want to um, build something from the list, that doesn't cost an order either. Um, so it's mostly just movement related, uh, a unit related, uh, improvement related and character related, but you can still build things within the city. Uh, I just realized that I uh, mis uh, misspoke when I said that the 0 0.6 at the top there is coming from my character. It's not, it's actually coming from the city. The city's generating a little amount there. So those are your orders. And if you select a unit, uh, particularly for movement, so you can see we have 16 uh, orders at the moment. And if I move the mouse here with this scout selected, you can see it's now saying 15. Because if I move anywhere within this circle, or well, it's not really a circle, but anywhere within this blue border, that'll count as a single move, and I'll be down to 15 orders. If I move further out, I'll be down to 14 orders. If I move even further out, I'll be down to 
13 orders. Um, because orders are so important, the game does have an undo button down here. So you can control and click to rewind at the entire previous turn. Or you can just control and Z to undo the last turn. You can just click it manually if you want. And you can redo. It might be very useful if you like use all of your um, orders moving scouts around. And then you suddenly realize you've got barbarians that you need to attack. And you've used all your orders. You can then go back and undo... Um, undo your previous movements and you will get those orders back now that can be abused a little bit because of course you saw I just revealed what was over here and then I undid that I still know what's here now I've had a look and now I've got those orders back so it can be abused so you have to decide whether or not that is something that you want to use but every other action that you perform will use an order now there are ways to get extra orders uh, if you um, go over here and mouse over, you can see that I can buy orders for um, training, which is a resource that you get mostly from uh, having uh, courage and also from your military buildings such as barracks, strongholds and things like that. You can spend 100 training to buy another order. You can also buy them for... Um, gold, but that requires the coin debasement um, law, which you'll get later on. Um, so mostly it's just going to be buying them for orders. If you end a turn and you do have any orders left that you haven't spent, they will automatically get sold and converted back into trading. So it does work both ways, and that's done automatically. You don't have to sell the ones you haven't used at the end of the turn. So that is how the order sisters, uh, orders system works. Uh, now we'll talk about movement. So we mentioned this a little bit before when I was showing you these sort of these blue outlines, these blue rings. So every single unit that can move uh, has a limited range that they can travel in a single move. So with this scout selected, if we actually look down here in the bottom left hand corner uh, next to the scout picture, when we see their defense next to that, we can see their movement. So their base movement here is three. Uh, you can get various promotions for units and different decisions and things that will improve units and let them go a little bit further and stuff like that. But for our scout, as this example, the base movement is three. Now, that is on flat, normal terrain. If we were, for example, to start trying to climb up hills or cross rivers, that is going to cost us more. You cannot move as far over rough terrain. Uh, also, if you are traveling on roads, movement on roads only uses one third of the amount so if my scout can travel three tiles in a move if he's using a road he'll be able to travel nine now we can actually make several moves in a turn you can see we've got these white dots above his icon uh, these white dots are also replicated down here below the health bar in the bottom left hand corner as i move the mouse around so i start with the mouse on the scout we wouldn't actually be moving all of those dots remain white if I was to move within this first, uh, I'm going to call it a circle, even though it's not. If I were to move it within this first circle, uh, it would uh, highlight one red dot because we'd be using one of our moves. If I were to move to the second circle, down to two red dots, and we could move to the third circle over here. And in fact, we could even move to the fourth circle and we could use all four of our moves in a single turn. Now, remember that each one of these moves still costs one order. And you can see that by the time we've moved here, we're, we're down to 12. Uh, you can, by the way, in the options menu, uh, there is a setting to change the orders that are displayed at the mouse tooltip uh, to the orders used rather than the orders remaining. So the default is what I've got here. It's showing how many orders will be remaining, but you can change it to show how many orders the move will consume, which in this case will be uh, four. So if I were to move all the way out here, right up to this uh, top corner, I'm basically completing four moves. And I can do that now. I cannot move any further. Now, if I just go ahead and undo that move, it counts as a single action. So it puts me right back where I was. Uh, if I only move one tile at a time, that still consumes the whole move. And again, it costs me an order. So if I just creep forward one tile at a time, I can only move that far. So you might want to always try and move towards the edge of the circle where you can. If I undo this, I'll be undoing four separate moves. 
So you might always want to be able to move to the edge of the circle. Try not to go that far out because you can leave yourself in a position where uh, once you've got there, you've now got no movement left and you can't get back. Now, there are a couple of different things that you can do with a unit that is out of movement. So at this point, the unit is classed as fatigued. And that says down here in the bottom left hand corner below the health bar, the unit is now fatigued. It cannot move again. When a unit is fatigued, though, it can still perform an action. So, for example, scouts have the ability to harvest a resource they're standing on. So even though we're fatigued, we can still harvest the wine over here on the left. It will cost an order. So we need to use an order to do that. But we have been able to harvest the wine. Um, I'm also going to just undo that to uh, demonstrate another thing. Which is that if we were to go to the wheat first, we can harvest the wheat. It still uses an order, but it doesn't use any movement. And it doesn't put us on cooldown. I can then move on to the wine and harvest the wine. So, scouts can perform multiple actions per turn. Harvesting a resource with a scout doesn't put it on to cooldown. There are certain other actions that do put units on cooldown. For example, if we were to go over to our warrior, we could move our warrior one space here, and now they still have two movement left. If I were to go, for example, and add a general to my warrior, that's now put them on cooldown. You can see this little icon that's appeared at the top general assigned one year so i can no longer move this unit even though they've got movement left i've done something with them that and they're on cooldown i can't move them anymore so it's important to know which things put units on cooldown and which things don't promoting a unit using training also puts them on cooldown but a free promotion from experience uh doesn't um but it still costs an order so it's just one of those things that you've kind of got to uh got to remember really um so i'm just going to undo those moves there because there's one other thing that i would like to cover so when you have a unit that is uh fatigued if you want to move it further that is still possible so in order to do that you have to force march them you've got an icon down here to force march so to force march a unit it's going to cost you 100 training just to do so so we're going to go ahead and hit force march so now we've spent 100 training now we can continue to move the unit you'll see that the outline is turned orange and that's telling us that we're force marching but you'll also notice it's now telling me that i will be using eight that i'll be down to eight orders we currently have 10. if i move out of that border you'll see it now says six and if i go further afield four and two that's because when you are force marching you use two orders for every move so really think carefully before you start force marching a unit because you've got to spend 100 training in order to force march the unit and then two orders for every movement they make. And if you decide you need to purchase more orders to move them, uh, every move is going to essentially cost you another 200, uh, 200 training. There is no downside to using a fatigued unit. Uh, a military unit that has fatigue will still fight just as well as one that isn't so it doesn't matter if you force march a unit it doesn't make any difference to how they perform all it means is that movement costs two orders instead of one and that is essentially how the movement system works so i hope that this video has been helpful i'll be back with more in a future video uh, so thanks a lot for watching and until next time goodbye for now